Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko is currently in a very difficult situation, Ukrainian military expert Mikhail Zirokov said on Radio NV. Putin demands from him for beginning military action to pull back some troops to open another front, but he does not have enough leverage over Lukashenko. Lukashenko always blocks all pressure from Russia with the Mosier oil refinery. He always says that the oil refinery is within striking distance of Ukrainian weapons, and this oil refinery is now one of the largest suppliers of gasoline for the Russian Federation, Zirokov said. He explained that gasoline is currently a strategically important resource for the Russian Federation, which has become of short supply due to regular strikes by Ukrainian UAVs on Russian oil refineries. But he can't completely ignore Putin. All these statements, all this rattling of weapons with the transfer of three, four, ten tanks, this is all for external and partly internal use, to show that something is being done, added Zirokov. Earlier, President of Belarus Alexander Lukashenko said that a Ukrainian UAV had violated the country's airspace. The dictator then decided to move his troops to the border with Ukraine. According to veteran of the Russian-Ukrainian war Alexei Getman, if the Belarusian ruler Alexander Lukashenko enters the war against Ukraine, his army will be defeated. But Ukraine will be able to attack enemy targets in the event of aggression without additional permissions. Lukashenko's statements about the Ukrainian threat are playing into Russia's hands, said Andriy Demchenko, the spokesman for the State Border Service of Ukraine, on air at the telethon. Because they have repeatedly created some kind of threat blaming Ukraine, and then they talk about some kind of buildup of forces, then they remove these forces because they do not see a threat. This is another information impact. I do not rule out that within this framework they will be forced to move equipment, personnel perhaps not in large quantities, but in order to create a picture that this is happening," Demchenko said. He also added that such movements of military equipment in Belarus are not happening towards the border with Ukraine, but inside the country itself. So far, border guards have not recorded any buildup of Belarusian forces, neither equipment nor personnel. Considering that Belarus remains in the sphere of influence of the terrorist country Russia, this direction is threatening. We must be prepared for any situation, in any direction. And this is why Ukraine continues to take measures to strengthen both the border line and the border area where the defense forces are located," Demchenko added. Kyiv sent one of the best equipped brigades, the 80th Airborne Assault Brigade, to the Kursk region. It was assigned the function of tough and fast attacks on enemy positions. The day before, a video could be seen on the internet showing tanks, armoured personnel carriers, sapper and engineering vehicles among the ranks of the Ukrainian armed forces. From the video, it is worth concluding that this is one of the first attacks by the Ukrainian armed forces which was carried out on the positions of the Russian armed forces on August the 6th, Forbes reports. One should not forget about the presence of American striker armoured vehicles in the ranks of the advancing forces, which are mainly in service with the 80th Brigade. Before the recent events, Kiev had already carried out raids deep into Russian territory, but they involved a small number of fighters. The new military operation is distinguished by the fact that at least three brigades, with a total of up to 6,000 servicemen, are participating in it. We are talking about the 22nd, 80th and 88th Brigades. Experts say this is no longer a raid, but a real invasion. At the same time, the Ukrainian armed forces may in the future be confronted with the North Group, numbering up to 50,000 Russian military personnel. However, now the occupiers from North are taking part in the battles in the Kharkiv region. The Ukrainian armed forces deliberately struck the area where the North Group was small in number. The source writes that if the enemy manages to quickly transfer the occupiers from the Kharkiv region to the Kursk region, they can push the Ukrainian armed forces out of their territory. However, if the enemy slows down, the Ukrainian armed forces will advance further. The surprise assault on Kursk, about 330 miles south of Moscow, seemed designed to bring the war home to Russia, where many do not feel any direct impact of a conflict that has destroyed many Ukrainian cities and towns and displaced millions. It also may be intended to divert Russian troops from other locations along the front, where Ukrainians' military has steadily lost ground in recent months. Analysts suggested Kyiv could be trying to gain leverage for any future negotiations with the Kremlin. 
While the precise objective of Ukraine's incursion is unclear, in addition to potentially diverting Russian troops from Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region, Kiev could be trying to gain leverage in future negotiations, analysts said.